Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin and I want to make this video to encompass everything that's coming out in patch 7.1.5 and like, I mean everything. We're gonna talk about the baseline things and then overall summaries of every single class and I also want to talk a bit about rogues and what I think rogues are gonna be at. So that's kind of how I'm gonna structure this video and this video is really just to sum up everything that's happening in the next patch. I want to cover rogues and also cover some of the other honorable mentions of classes you guys might want to be on the lookout for in the next patch because of some of the different updates and some of the different damages that we're able to deal during the PTR. So let's get right to the video. To cover all the baseline things that are doing a lot of class changes, there's new legendaries being thrown in there in the game, so like trinkets that a lot more classes can use, shoulder pieces, chest pieces that you might have not have had. So be sure to check out the uh, loot tab in order to see what legendaries are getting added for your spec and your classes. They also have artifact knowledge catch up so you can play your alt. Great for anybody who does PvP because you can just basically catch up your characters with your artifact weapons since gear means less in PvP. Secondary stat changes are more PvE thing where they change it so that an item level that's a higher, like for example I got an 880 trinket the other day uh, and I also that same day got an 860 trinket. Apparently the 860 has better secondary stats so an 860 item level piece is better than my 880 item level piece. So Blizzard wants to change that up so a higher item level usually means an upgrade. They also added new Brawler's Guild so if you've done Brawler's Guild before you'll be able to do so although you still have to get an invitation. We have the micro holidays which are basically mini holidays that happen last for like 2-3-4 days and they can be stuff like Anchorage event, Naxxramas, some kind of spore event maybe in um, in the old Outlands but like little holidays for people to do little things so a lot more fun things to do in the game. Mr. Pandaria Time Walking Dungeons are back, I don't really remember liking any of them. I mean I guess they were cool because Pandaria was the first expansion where I truly played through the whole expansion. So I remember those very uh, very closely, but I don't think I was really impressed. But that'd be kind of cool to go back and revisit, plus there's a cool new mount. There's also professional updates which I haven't been keeping up on, but there are professional updates so we'll leave it at that. And Blades Edge Arena revamp has been added. And what I want to talk about Arena, I think they actually made the arena slightly bigger. Uh, but they changed dynamic uh, sizes of everything and it's darker looking so I don't know how I feel playing that arena because it actually has like lighting effects which make the game look prettier but it might make it more difficult to, for me to PvP on so we'll see how that works out but it seems to be a fun nice update and plus Nighthold Raid will be available which my guild will be hitting as soon as possible whenever that arrives so that'll be a little bit after the uh, patch 7.1.5 update all right, let's talk about rogues and where they're going to be at. So this is everything that's happened to rogues in the patch 7.1.5. We'll start with assassination. Assassination in terms of PvE or PvP. I feel like Agonizer Poison has been buffed in terms of its uh, proc chance. Elaborate planning has been toned down, not completely nerfed, but toned down. Internal bleeding has been buffed, so that's a really good buff for PvP. Septifurge Garo damage has been buffed, which is another great buff for the opener damage in PvE. And the rupture damage has been changed, and as far as I believe, it changed uh, in terms of like steady damage. But rupture damage is effectiveness increased by the time that you're given it. So let's say you put in 5 common points, you get 24 seconds of a bleed. And so basically, one tick of that bleed, whether it was 1 point or 5 common points, the damage doesn't isn't supposed to make that much of a difference. The ticks are supposed to be the same. All you're choosing is just how long the rupture lasts on the enemy, which I think is a buff for PvP and PvE in some senses, because then you're not really losing out on how much damage your first initial rupture can do, especially with different openers that you can get. So I guess in a way you could say it's a buff, and after testing an assassination on a PTR, I do deal more damage, but I guess we'll just have to see. Crippled and Poison now slows the enemies by 30% instead of 50. I'm not sure how this is going to stick in terms of PvP uh, because slows are pretty important in terms of PvP and if everybody is running away from rogues, that might suck. All the rest of the rogue specs got a slow nerf uh, or a nurture their slows. So we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty skeptical on that uh, change, but we'll see how it goes. Of course, Blizzard decided to buff Flying Daggers, which is a uh, most picked honor talent, obviously, but increased the radius by 100%. Actually, that might be somewhat viable for PvP in terms of BGs, but the amount of damage your uh, Phantom Rise deals in PvP is just so low. I can't really think of somebody actually grabbing Flying Daggers and think that it'll be effective. Maybe for flag spinning so you can get other rogues out of stealth before they can get to you at most, but that's as far as I would really give it. Then we have Outlaw Spec, which is first thing that we have on the Outlaw Spec is Blind is given to everybody, so that's fun. 
Outlaw got a aura to apply in terms of its damage increase. Cannonball Barrage got increased. Ghost of Strike uh, got a tooltip fix. Killing Spree got a damage increase. Pickpocket got a melee range increase. So that's fun. Pistol Shot got a tooltip increase um, or, or tooltip fix. And its slow has been nerfed. Saber Slash also got a tooltip increase. But in a way, with the aura that Outlaw Rogues got, in a way that aura increases your effectiveness of your uh, damage abilities by 16%. So in a way, Saber Slash and Pistol Shot got a damage increase and so did your run through. The Chase Slice and Dice, so Slice and Dice now also gives you energy regeneration rate by 15%. I still feel like that could be maybe a little bit higher because then it may make me more competitive. But I highly doubt that it will be the best talent for PvE in terms of just raw damage. I still feel like Roll the Bones 2 buffs deals more damage than Slice and Dice even with this energy regen buff. But in PvP, we'll have to see how it goes. I'm pretty pretty hopeful for PvP, but if it doesn't work out, then I could see it kind of go sour. Blade Flurry got a nerf in terms of its cleave AoE damage. Instead of dealing 35% of normal damage, now it deals 30, but that's completely fine. I've been playing a lot of Outlaw recently, and the AoE damage deal is actually just dumb. So I'm fine with this nerf because, honestly, they did get us a buff for an aura, so it kind of bounces out. Blunderbuss Artifact trait uh, proc now deals a lot more damage, so we'll have a lot more options in terms of our very first row of talents, whether you want a Ghost of Strike, Sword, uh, sword Master, or uh, Quick Draw. So that would be one of the different options that we'll have, and uh, I think Quick Draw might be one of the better options that a lot of rogues will be running, but I still feel like for PvE, Ghost of Strike will be the, uh, the talent that most people will be running. But for PvP, we have a lot more options. Blur time has been changed in terms of its titles or uh, how they function. So now it says while adrenaline rush is active, your ability cooldowns recover 50% faster, not during adrenaline rush. So it kind of like includes more abilities into the uh, the effect because during adrenaline rush it was like all oh, the abilities prior, but now it's like why you activate it? Yes, now we have a faster cooldown for everything. Also, they reduced the effectiveness of Fate Bringer and Fate's Thirst, which uh, one of them reduces the cost of finished moves by two instead of three now. So that's artifact trait. And then Fate's Thirst, they changed the effectiveness of stacking damage for your run through from 6% a stack to 4 but when you test it in terms of damage PvE wise we were doing more damage anyway so I guess that change is fine and PvP I still think we're not really losing too much in terms of burst because our saber slashes are hitting a little bit harder so overall I would say assassination is doing a little bit more damage outlaws doing a little bit more damage PvE and PvP the only thing I'm concerned are the slows and finally we have subtlety subtlety got an aura increase in terms of effectiveness and healing by nine percent so all your abilities like for example night blade periodic ticks are nine percent more effective gloom blade got a buff and i'm pretty sure it might be a pve alternative i'm not sure if anybody will be running pvp gloom blade but it's an interesting ability and it deals a lot more damage than it used to so that's a plus master shadows got a slight nerf in terms of energy uh, that it grants you but i don't think that's too much of an issue because it goes from 30 energy to 25 so five energy isn't really a lot master of subtlety uh passive in terms of the uh i guess how long the passive lasts uh it went from six seconds to five seconds so a little bit less damage in terms of how much damage you can deal with master subtlety shadow focus got a slight tune up but nobody grabs it anyway uh then we have night blade slow now isn't as effective it used to be 50 percent slow but now it's 30 so everybody got hit by that uh change to their slows um then we have Akari Soul, now procs Shadow Strike and Cheap Shot after 2 seconds on your target. So it shouldn't be on the target, but should be on your target. And hopefully they didn't just reward it, but they actually changed how uh, Akari Soul should work. So if you had before where Akari Soul would attack a target that's been blinded, that shouldn't happen anymore. And hopefully that won't happen, but we'll see how it comes out. But Akari Soul will be procking a lot faster, so you'll be able to line up burst damage together much, much quicker. Gormor's Bite damage got doubled, so it deals 1000% plus 1000% shadow damage. So basically double the damage of Gormor's Bite for PvE and PvP. I think this is a great change because you'll have a stronger opener as a subtlety, especially when you're opening like with a mage or any other bursty class. So for PvP, it'll be awesome because you smack him with a Gormor's Bite for a little bit extra damage in order to make sure you can have more chance to see secure a kill and an awesome change to shadow nova where after using a shadow strike or cheap shot or a shuriken storm while shadow dance is active you explode dealing shadow damage and this effect can occur every five seconds instead of how it was where every time you come out of stealth shadow nova pops and hits everybody around you so you can proc a lot more often every five seconds by using shadow strike and cheap shot overall effectiveness in terms of damage it's an increase for subtlety pve and pvp
Now for the general rogue changes, critical strikes have been nerfed from 10% to 5% in terms of baseline critical strike. We've got strata concealment, which is a cool gimmick ability. It won't really see that much play in PvE because let's say in mythic runs, you still have to kill a certain amount of mobs before you can complete the run. But in PvP, it might be fun if you are playing with another co uh, class that needs a little bit of stealth so you can make sure everybody gets an opener and rogues always get the first hit. Uh, we also got a change to alacrity where it stacks faster uh, or gives you 2% uh, uh, haste every single stack but stacks only 10 times so speed up on that anticipation now holds 10 combo points cheat death now has a six minutes cooldown so that'll suck a little bit death row buff for all three specs has more damage in terms of its aoe Deeper Stratagem has been earned by 50% where you finish moves used to deal 10% increased damage. Now you deal 5% in order to account for the changes, plus the R is that you should count in, so it's more like not really quite a nerf, but like a balance down because you're only getting buffed anyway. Faint has been changed, so it's no longer 20 energy, but 35 energy, so rogues can't really spam faint and how to be concerned in terms of PvE, being able to hit that extra extra saber slash in there or you save up the, uh, the energy for the faint in order to reduce damage that you take in PvE. And in PvP, it'll just mean rogues that are bad at energy management will basically die out faster than anybody else because they'll be spamming faint and they'll be energy starved and they'll kind of fall behind. March for death has been changed so now it gives you full combo points uh so if you're rolling let's say deeper strat on ptr last time i did it if you had deeper strat and mark for death it will give you six common points on the life servers on 7.1 it would give you five maximum so that's a cool change and prey on the week now was added with blind for assassination so as assassination if you blind somebody you can have prey in the week added so a lot of good changes for rogues i feel like we'll have to see how it all works out at the end of it all i know a lot of people were pretty skeptic about uh all the changes for rogues but we did get aura changes in terms of damage increase so if we have same utility that we had before plus aura damage increases then i think we'll be okay for the most part and i think blizzard is trying to balance out specs in pvp and pve i am pretty optimistic about playing outlaw but we'll see how it goes as soon as the patch drops i'm actually very excited to go in and test all these things live i'm excited to go in and test out slice and dice and if all worse comes to worse everybody will always be able to play assassination for the damage that you have plus the blind that you have plus the change they did to paladins in terms of constantly dispelling all your poisons so that should be happening a lot less for assassination rogues but i guess we'll just have to see how it happens in the game some of the other side changes to all the other classes and some of the classes to take a note for in case you are thinking of transitioning from rogue or just simply want to have an alt let's talk about some of the classes that are getting some of the cooler changes down to them i feel that on holy death knight it's got a few damage buffs to them and survivability buffs so if you played a death knight in the past or have a death knight alt or like on holy for whatever reason you might want to check out a holy death knight because i think they'll be hitting harder Hunters. Hunters got traps, so you might want to check out Hunters, Beastmaster, and Marksman can use traps. Zerala will have stronger traps to use and utilize, so you'll have a lot more options in terms of traps. They also brought back the knockback trap for Marksman, so that'll be very, very, very exciting to check out. So check out your hunters because now you might actually feel like a real hunter uh mage has got a few changes and on the ptr arcane was doing so much damage you guys might want to check him out arcane might be the arcane dream again we'll just have to see how it goes uh fire got a few changes in terms of crit and damage i think fire should be dealing more damage but less crits so you might feel nerfed on that so it might be something new and uh, fun for people to check out because it should be doing a little bit more in terms of its effectiveness but we'll have to see Demon Hunters have now gotten Mana Burn Mechanic and Mana Breaking, so it's kind of like they'll be siphoning the healer's mana in throughout the whole arena run, whether it's 2v2 or 3v3 or BGs, so you'll be able to burn enemy's mana and then hit them and deal damage based on how much mana they have or how much mana they don't have. So that's another cool change to check out. I feel like Demon Hunters will be a fun spec in terms of just dealing raw cleave damage. They'll also have the Mana Burn Mechanic. So I actually honestly think that'll be a ton of fun another class that you guys should definitely check out if you are in the mood for checking out other classes besides rogue uh elemental shamans apparently they're really powerful currently on 7.1 as i'm making this video they're really strong and i've got to see that power for myself last night and holy crap the amount of birds they can deal is straight up insane but on the ptr they were dealing so much damage it was actually insane and i would love playing with an elemental shaman i would basically trick the shaman as an outlaw rogue and watch the shaman just fire meatballs and icicles and whatever the hell he uh, fired at the enemy. Just watch the enemy burn to the ground. It was straight up hilarious as out the rogue. I basically did no damage, but I was the biggest contributor to in terms of his bursty mechanic. So that'd be something fun to check out and something cool for you guys to uh, explore. 
and I think that's about everything that I can think of in terms of oh warriors too arms warriors and fury warriors you got a few changes a uh, warriors got a disarm and also got this cool shout where they'll shout at the enemy and the enemy will deal damage to 50% uh, less damage to everybody actually it's called duel you duel the enemy you challenge the target to a duel and while challenged all damage you and the target deal to uh, other targets is reduced by 50% so basically you force an enemy into this 1v1 duel where you will take you will you know, the warrior will deal 50% less damage to others but it'll make the enemy deal 50% damage to everybody else so you force to duel each other and that's literally all you can do to another so I think that'll be very exciting so those are some of the other class changes for you guys to check out thank you so much for watching this video hope you enjoyed and I'll have the link for the wow head link and all the class changes for you guys to read and check out but I'm very excited for 7.1 to come out very 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 soon and hopefully this video was enough for you guys to get all the basic information you need as a rogue as a player and as somebody who's maybe thinking of playing alts uh, with the uh with the mechanic that's coming out very very soon with your artifact weapon catch-up mechanic where you can get your artifact points and research back up and everything and all that so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video my name is Dalaran. let me know what you thought in the comments down below again links in description so please go read them for yourselves thank you guys i'll see all of you in the next one